2012, I met two very interesting gentlemen while I was filming in at Orange County Fair Speedway, Dan Barton and Tim Pitts. The video you are about to watch is a thank you and a tribute to those two men and what they've done for auto racing. Welcome to my broke down palace On my hands and my knees I will roll, roll, roll. Dan Barton was the true uh, patriarch of videography here at the Orange County Speedway. It began just a year or two after I arrived here. Basically his tenure was through the uh, last half of the 80s, all through the 90s. Uh, very committed very loyal, a one-man band, did a great job every Saturday night, uh, had good equipment, not a lot of it because he was all by himself. Uh, would wheel in here with a shopping cart just full of equipment every Saturday night, uh, captured every bit of the action from start to finish till the final checkered flag at the end of the night. Uh, you know, he was committed to Orange County, but he also had done a lot of filming elsewhere. He, he roamed Ackward Speedway a lot as well. You know, he was the first full-time videographer here at Orange County and, and did a great job uh, he was the type of guy that could watch the action, knew a lot about racing, and he could pick up on just about where either a good battle was going to take place or where possibly a caution was about to take place, and he was right on it. You know, he, he was not a type of uh, video team that would uh, only, only watch the lead guy for 20 laps or only watch the slowest car because it was easy to follow. Dan was right there in on the action. It was, it was, like I said, was one of the first true videographers here at the Orange County Speedway. He was a great addition to the Saturday night show because back in those days, the race fans really took advantage of buying the VHS tapes. Now, not only did the, the teams themselves want a copy of the race uh, that they were racing in every Saturday night, but the fans as well kept a lot of the, uh, the videotapes from year after year. Uh, winter months when there was nothing left to do, hey, you popped in those VHS tapes and away you went. And of course, one thing that we always look forward to at the end of the season was his season wrap-up, which he called the Danger Zone tape, and it contained all the thrills and spills of that season. Uh, so it was always something that everybody looked forward to purchasing was uh, Dan Barton's Danger Zone video uh, at the end of every year. So uh, He was always famous for having a crash video, uh, and we'd always look forward to getting that and the music that he played with it and stuff. He was using some Top Gun stuff and all that stuff back in the day. That was the cool stuff. So Dan, Dan was the guy that did the videos. He took videos and gave me one pretty much every week and I basically told me study this and I did I studied it really well there's a sight you won't see too often Brett Hearn we used to uh, we used to get Dan's uh, videos every week and we went into the, the street stocks uh, pro stocks and we just continued I have a uh, a closet full of Dan's videos and the memory of Dan Barton is uh, every Sunday night so actually Sunday afternoon I'd ride to Newburgh get a video that way right after dinner Sunday night we could uh, go over what we did on Saturday uh, by watching his videos that was the early 90s late 80s all the way through uh, 96 97 I remember doing it yeah uh, watching Dan's videos back in the day was was really awesome I mean when I first started racing um, Especially my mom, she couldn't, she couldn't wait to hand me that $20 bill to go get that video for that next week and uh, so she could have that and put that in the collection at home. Now here's one of Dan's classic uh, tapes from Big Race here at the Speedway. So sit back and enjoy some of the clips from Dan Barton's racing videos. started early 90s you know Dan was huge here doing the videos and uh, we look forward every week to, to getting the video watching all the other races that went on okay guys is he in first yet I came out of the Brett Hearn Racing School way back in the day and he'd always say, you know, get one of Dan's videos and, and watch that and, and see if you're doing a little something wrong or what you can do better for next week. And, and that was always something when I was hot and heavy into this game, that's what you wanted to do. And it was always, he was always spot on with following each guy just a, a little bit during the race because it's hard to film 26 guys and make them all happy, you know. But he did a really great job and I'm, I was really glad to know him.
just like any other sport. If you watch video, you can learn a lot from video, right? So they watch it in basketball, football. It's all about watching what you did, what you didn't do, and kind of rethinking the race a little bit. And I used to do that all the time. I feel right now that's where a lot of these guys are lacking as far as drivers because uh, it takes talent to drive a car but if you can get to somebody and you know what they're doing before you get to them it comes natural uh, reaction when you get to that guy and it makes your Saturday night racing a lot easier. Dan Barn, uh, before I started racing, he was doing the videos here um, back in the probably late, you know, early to mid 90s, late 90s. Um, when I started racing, I'd buy the, the videotapes every week. Uh, he'd help me out by watching the videos to make sure I, I was hitting my lines. I could watch other people, um, see how they were hitting their lines, to make my, my driving better. And um, I actually got videos from him every week that he was here. Uh, yes, Dan Barton goes back many years. Uh, Dan used to uh, video the race every Saturday night here for many years and uh, I remember getting the videos from Dan every week and uh, it helped a lot actually to go back and look at the race and, and analyze what we did and how we can make things better. Races, you know, during the week, I get it from them, and we we go over them and look and see where we made mistakes, and uh, it has helped me over the years. Barton. Uh, well, he was always here. He was always with a smile. And to this day, I still have a television that plays the VCRs and I won't get rid of it. So, here's to Dan. Great. You broke from home videos into really professional videos here in the, what, the early 90s, late 80s. And um, I know me and Greg studied a lot of your videotapes over the years. And it was great to see what our car was doing, plus what other people were doing. So thank you for all that and your donation to Orange County Fair Speedway. We really miss you.
Martin. He was a great guy. He uh, took a lot of videos of us, and, and he's, he's, he's pretty awesome. I wish he was back because there's nobody here to take videos and stuff. And uh, it'd be cool if you see him back. Another good person uh, to talk about was Dan Barton. I always remember racing videos with Dan from Atwood Speedway and Orange County. Back even when my dad was racing, Dan was probably one of the nicest persons to, besides you doing them, Jim, to come up and always offer, uh, I mean, every week Dan would come up and offer you a video. You know, Dan made uh, a lot of good memories for this place that'll that'll live forever with, with the stuff that he got on video and the crashes and the winds and uh, you know I know a lot of families you know Dan's meant a lot to them because they can look back at, uh, on the fond memories that he created. Great guy, great guy, and uh, he always took care of me, so he's a great guy. And uh, thank you for the many years of videos. We appreciate it here. Thank you. And, uh, we still study videos, so Dan was a big part of it. I wish him well. I appreciate every one of your videos, and I know my dad did too, and we want to say thank you for everything, Dan. You're a great person. So, yeah, Dan Barton, the true patriarch. We love him. We're so so happy that he was part of the Orange County Racing family for as long as he was, and like I say, we still uh, appreciate the fact that he tries to get out here at least once or twice a year and take in a race. I'm gonna play a Wondering if there's a specific night in the history of your time at the Speedway that sticks out as a very memorable one or above the rest? Well, I think probably back uh, at the beginning of my career here in the uh, mid-80s, uh, probably getting to announce Carl Van Horn's last win ever. That was a, definitely a night that I'll remember. Uh, the night we got to interview uh, Chris Economaki, and in the, in the midst of the conversation, uh, it came out that Chris was actually the very first announcer ever at the Nazareth Half Mile Speedway. And I was the very last announcer ever at Nazareth. So, you know, in the booth we had the first announcer and the last announcer ever at Nazareth. That was pretty cool, just stumbled upon that. So, uh, stuff like that. Uh, other nights, of course, when, when Jack Roush was here and stuff, having fun with those guys. Uh, yeah, there's been some, some definitely memorable nights, that's for sure. Here, was there one particular era that sticks out the most to you? Well, probably the Danny and Brett era. And you know, it's just like today. You know, we call those now the good old days. We lived through them. Uh, everybody had a favorite, everybody hated one of the two guys, and we didn't realize we were probably enjoying one of the greatest highlights of the career of the Speedway. And, and you know, you sit back and you say, well, boy, the good old days. Hey, every Saturday night we come out here, we're making the good old days in racing. But yeah, that Danny and Brett era, man, I, you know, we wish, we'd give anything to go back to the, those days. 
So that was definitely a highlight of the career of the Speedway, definitely. With it being full fender night, and thinking back to when the first street stock series began with dirt as the save on series and then progressed to the pro stocks, you've had some time away from Orange County to interview some of the drivers here and their successes with the dirt pro stock tour. Are there things that you can take away from watching the McGannon brothers, Tom Cannizzaro, Tommy Cook, Billy Casquell, and how well they were away from Orange County and even more dominant in their years at the Moody Mile? Well, the thing of it was, with the drivers that graduated up into the pro stock ranks, it was great back when I had the opportunity to announce at Syracuse to see some of the Orange County guys there and doing so well. It's like you knew they cut their teeth right here at the hard clay. And to see them go up there and just compete against the best of the best and be one of the best of the best themselves. Yeah, that was, that was phenomenal. And that stuff we'll never be able to recapture again either because the mile's gone. Uh, but, you know, we had some drivers there that, that also never left the full fender ranking. A guy like Tommy Cannizzaro. I mean, he was one of the, the phenomenal full fender drivers of all time. Never went up to open wheel and still has the records and stuff today to, to show for in full fender excitement. If we jumped into the time machine and you could take one thing from any era of the racing and bring it to modern day, what would that be? I wish that the, uh, the pro stocks back in their day, the full fender pro stocks, would have really just blossomed. I mean, we always had car count trouble, uh, you know, back when they finally did away with them. There were only six or eight cars coming out a week. That was such cool racing. The cars looked cool. The racing was cool. If we could have had 24 of those guys every Saturday night, that would have put this place on the map in a whole different category. I've been coming here since 1966. I was here for the Ray Martin years. When Ray left in the 80s, Tim Pitts came along. It was a bit of an adjustment. But Tim became family up here. Tim was the guy. I mean, he kept him moving all night, has his quirky little sayings and things he likes to say. And Buck Marl down to about two gallons of Java. We'll take him home the rest of this feature event as pilot of the pace car. Bob, if you will, gentlemen, start your engine. There you have it. The command has now been given. This when you hear the voice, you know you're at Orange County. Yeah. Thought you are going to see a checkered. No, you're not. Yellow, Yellow lights on. You think there. Like a buzzard on road killers, Tyler Dipple. Shoo, shoo. Get away from me. One of my favorite sayings is uh, we could throw a blanket over them, but we wouldn't do that because then they can't see. Well, you could throw a blanket over them, but then they couldn't see, and that wouldn't be very nice of us. One of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is don't try this at Grandma's house. Trouble exits turn number two, waves bye bye. He's awesome on the mic. I used to think back in the day, I was like, oh, this guy's saying stuff like that's off the wall. But then it would hit you. You'd go home and you were saying you were saying it all the time. You know what he was talking about. Very, very good. Oh baby, baby, down the back straight away they navigate. Tim, I mean, you know, to still be here and do do what you do every weekend. Uh, it is awesome and uh, it, it's a thrill just to listen to you. If Dodd's gonna do it, he's gonna have to do it the hard way. Dodd has definitely got some extra horsepower. Swaps lanes on Urich. That's what he wants to do. That's where he wants to put him. He knows Urich is at the disadvantage right now. And a new race leader, it's given to Steve Dodd. Dodd worked him well. Walked to know where he wanted to where Urich wanted to go. And he pinched him. He knew he couldn't go down to the inside. Urich did want to be on the outside. Tim Pitts, a fixture here at Orange County Fair Speedway. Steve Dodd had a mission in mind. He knew he had some work to do. He planned that out. Talk about strategy, like my good friend Bugs Bunny always says. Many years, uh, many good times in Victory Lane, uh, being interviewed by Tim Pitts. A lot of good memories. Checker flag, make the check payable to Steve Dodd. Chris Schultz, second. Tim's been around long enough. Uh, he's got a lot of stories here as well. And um, just uh, a tribute to somebody that loves the sport as much as he does and can stick it out for as many years as he has here at Orange County. And I know I appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of other people do have him around. Gary Edwards picks up the number one spot. Spellman scraped the inside machinery. Did that cause any problems with the car? We don't know. Did the lap traffic finally slow up those uh, race cars down there in three and four? We don't know. Did Ken White finish that fourth dozen of donuts? We don't know. Outside lane opening up, 
And trouble! Oh, this is not good. Tim Pitts, uh, what, what, a, what a icon of Orange County Fair Speedway. I mean, from, from me coming here as a little kid and hearing, he, he's like the Mike Joy in NASCAR but of Orange County. And you just hear that voice and we take it for granted because we're here all the time, but it's such a, how he comes up with all that stuff to say and to keep everyone entertained through rain delays, through that. He's just, and he's always on his game and uh, another icon of uh, Orange County. And I just love seeing him around and saying hello. And he's always got something to say. And he knows so much about this game. So uh, another great guy. Right here at this legendary house of power, the Orange County Fair Speedway, where since 1919 on a weekly basis, we've been lighting up the County of Orange with high speed racing excitement. You know, back almost 100 years ago, they called this famous track the Harry Clay Oval. They had a football field in the inside at one time. Then it was named Victory Speedway for many years after that. The checkered flag. Make the check payable to Hollywood Frank Mitchell. Chuck McKee is second. Remember being a kid up in the stands, uh, listening to Tim Pence, you know, with his bumper to bumper, door handle to door handle. Number one that time, didn't see the third brake light on the number two X car, almost wanted that baby up. Made Distant Burgers Moo Cows head for the barn on that move. Uh, was talking and, you know, I've been friends with him ever since I started racing. Uh, he did a lot when, um, you know, Barbara Luce had passed away. Uh, he did a, a lot of tribute stuff for her. Um, I, and I think, um, you know, Tim, Tim Pitt's a great guy. The wind was strong the entire race ball, but it looked like the last three or four laps where he really started to finalize his thing, and he had about a good thing. I don't know if you know, he asked Tommy Meyer, do you believe in time travel? Here's a question that probably you've never been asked before in racing and probably never will be asked again. Do you believe in time travel? No. No. Hmm. When yeah. Tommy peeked his hat out the car, out of the, his trailer, and then saw his tribute car. Come here. Let, let's, let, 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 let me show you something. That, well, maybe turn your mind <laughs> on time travel. Now I'll bet you got some goosebumps there you never thought you'd have. Wow, look at that. That's the oldies. That certainly takes you back to 1986, does it not? He understood why Timmy asked him if he believed in time travel. And like I said, that, that just hit me. I didn't even yeah, know. yeah, I've known Timmy for... I don't know, 30 years or something maybe? Yep, drove a race car, right? the number one spot as they head down the back straightaway. That's going to be Reese C. Jr. Keep an eye on the move car. Timmy Pitts, he three wheels it off in turn number two. Here they come down. Oh, the concrete barrier, man, down the wheel. Oh, up here on the top side. But here comes the move car. Timmy Pitts now moves into spot number three. Timmy down to the inside, he'll look for the number two position down the back straightaway. Watch him as he moves the 73 over. Uh, memory of Tim Pitts, I can always remember him calling me Raymond Tarantino. You know, everybody loves Raymond. That was one of his uh, favorite sayings when I, when I ever made it to vi Victory Lane. And one of his other good sayings was, you know, uh, reaching in the glove box for uh, Fuzzy's ears. Richie Urick. Pulled Fluffy from the hat with a big, big smile. I think we gotta grab Fluffy's ears out of the glove box. We're rounding up the top five. Well, as Joseph the Carpenter would say, here's where the sandpaper hits the hardwood. Coming out of turn number four this time, race leader now for the first time in this event is the 97 car, Jerry Higby. Hindley trying to work some magic on his hands on the rabbit's foot right there in the glove compartment. Clutches it in his sweaty little palms and takes that car down the back straightaway trying to close the gap, PDQ. This time, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in the 2013 racing season, it's Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Higby. Tim, Tim Pence is just a, a classic guy, you know, like, uh, right from my, my first feature win, I think in 91, he was on the microphone already and, uh, I remember like right from then, I think I was 19 years old, right till now, you know, I still see him every week, give him a wave, and uh, I don't think this place would ever be the same without him, you know, uh, his voice. Orange County, the five decades that is of stock car racing at the Orange County Speedway, oh, that's ugly, that was ugly. Uh, the music sets that he plays with everything, and uh, his lingo and demeanor, I think it's, it, it, it really creates a, a better atmosphere for Orange County and it creates something that people are comfortable with from year to year. Ladies and gentlemen, the checker flag is about to unfurl before our very eyes on a turn to the four. It's going to be Timmy Hartley! Second spot.
Tim Pitts, uh, I got a lot of experience with him in uh, Victory Lane. You know, you never have enough, but Tim's a great guy. He's been around here as long as I can remember. Um, you know, I, I, before I started racing, you know, I was always into the way he come up with his one-liners and, uh, you know, just his voice that carries through the grandstands. Number one and two, the drag race down the back to the wheel. Oh, Chuck McKee almost bobbled and wobbled out of turn number two that time. That cost him valuable racing footage on the speedway. Car, the meat and the sandwich that time that has pulled himself into the number three spot right now. I mean, he comes up with some stuff that's uh, it's out there, but it's great. And boinkity boink boink. Like, you could put a quarter between them and get a nickel's nest worth of change. Wait, Charlie Donald got a visit over the hallway. It is Stephen Cameron couldn't slip a dollar bill between him and make a nickel's worth of change. And it's like, <laughs> where the hell did he come up with stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. You know, or gave him Joel the nickname the Amish Rabbi. That's where that came from. Yeah. 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 So the one time in uh, Victory Lane where he got me and made me kind of feel like uh, I really wasn't that smart when he said the only reason why you won is because you painted your car coarse and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you put blinkers, you put brake lights on your car so everybody stops. You know what I think what's helping you this year is you painted the car caution yellow. So they get behind you, they think the caution's out, and they slow up a little bit. Well, I also put brake lights on the car too. <laughs> I see that you got the switch hot wire, so the brake lights are on at all times, right? Uh, this time, last lap racing action, and any one of three drivers can visit us in Victory Lane momentarily. It's all Emerson Cargain on the outside, marching down the back straight. Oh, Donald is in trouble. Well, that was ugly. In the midst of excitement, yellow and checkered will fly. We will talk to Emerson Cargain as the winner out here tonight. Uh, well, with Tim, it was like he had little sayings for everybody. And he... He got me when I, I was listening to the video one night and it was, he introduced me as M.O. Doc, oh man dirt. That I had more laps on the racetrack than the rest of the field. And Well, the old man of motorsports hasn't forgot his fast way around the Orange County Speedway. Folks from Middletown Auto Records also coming out to congratulate Cargain on a drive well done this Saturday evening. And I said, uh, when I heard that, it was like, wow, I guess he's right. <laughs> but yeah, to me, to me, great. He comes around, he asks questions. He's always, he's here in the beginning and he always has information when he's doing it doing the videos and every doing the, the announcing and even in in victory lane i mean he, he's personable you know and he doesn't ask you any hard questions <laughs> especially for the younger guys because i remember my first one i couldn't even hardly talk they'd always pick guys and he'd always pick me to win you know you know they all picked their favorite guy to win and i know i was his pick for a lot of nights and that made me happy so I've met him a couple times at Victory Lane. He's always a good egg, so Tim is uh, a fixture here now and a welcome one. I really, really enjoy is at the end of every Victory Lane where he says, thank you to everybody. We love you. Good night. Yeah, great. That's Tim. Great. At the legendary House of Power, as always, please drive safely along the way home. God bless. We love you all. Good night. Lovers come and go. But the river will roll, roll, roll Failing home is going home by the waterside I will rest my bones Just listen to the river sing sweet songs To rock my soul